I am going to explain about counter current immunoelectrophoresis. This is another type of precipitin reaction that will be demonstrated using the antigen antibodies and they are made to move in an inert material that is agarose gel in the presence of electricity by using an electrophoretic apparatus. The antigens and the antibodies are made to move in the presence of electric field using an electrophoretic apparatus. Therefore, it is called as counter current immunoelectrophoresis. Why it is called as counter current? Because antigen and the antibody move towards each other in the presence of electric field and meet at a particular point to give a precipitin band. Therefore, it is called as counter current immunoelectrophoresis. Generally, the antibody loaded side well is connected to the positive pole and antigen loaded side is connected to negative pole. Under given condition of the buffer, that is the acetate buffer of pH 7.2 to 7.5, the antigen under test will be negatively charged and antibody will be positively charged. So, the antibody and antigens under the presence of electric field will move towards each other to form a precipitin band. Here, one should note that depending on the concentration of the antigen and the antibody, if the concentration of both of them is equal, then the precipitin band will appear exactly in the center between the two wells. And if the concentration of antibody is higher than antigen, the precipitin band will be pushed towards the antigen side well. If the con concentration of antigen is higher than antibody, the precipitin band will be pushed towards the antibody side. But one need to take care that it should not be abnormally high in concentration. In such a condition, the precipitin band will not appear. But if the concentrations are ideally equal, then the precipitin band will be right in the middle between the two wells. And these are the requirements which I have already explained earlier for the other precipitin reactions where you need a microscope slide and a punching device and pasture pipette as well as the pipettes for loading the sample and the agarose for the preparation of agarose gel and antigen and the antibody. The agarose gel required quantity that is about 2% is prepared by uh, dissolving it in an appropriate buffer by heating it at a moderate heat and after the complete, complete dissolution the agarose is poured on the slide and the slide is prepared for the counter current immunoelectrophoresis by pouring about 3.5 ml of the agarose on the microscope slide. Then the slide is kept in the moist chamber as explained earlier for about half an hour and after keeping it in the moist chamber it is kept in the fridge and then the slide is taken out and kept on the stencil and then Paired wells are punched as shown in the diagram. Here the stencil where number of pairs of wells about 4 rows are there. Each pair of well that is for the antigen and the antibody will be approximately about 5 millimeters from one another and the each paired row of the well will be approximately 1 centimeter apart. That is here you can see each pair of the well is about 5 millimeters and 
the paired rows are 1 cm apart. And you can see the wells are punched using the, the punch. And if at all the wells still have the agarose after punching, the agarose can be removed with the help of a needle. And once the agarose is cleared, the wells are ready for loading the antigen and the antibody. Dedicate left hand side wells to the antigen and right hand side wells for the antibody. In the paired wells, you can dedicate left hand side wells for the antigen and right hand side wells for the antibody and punch one extra well on one corner of the slide because after punching the entire slide, the slide will look alike. To avoid the confusion of connecting the antibody side well to the positive pole, one need to punch one extra well as shown in the figure here so that that part of the slide should be connected to the positive pole. The antigens and the antibodies can be loaded 10 microliters each as mentioned earlier. Do not overflow the well. Antigen side should be on the left hand side and the antibody side should be right hand side in the each paired wells. As shown in the diagram here, the antigen wells are on the left hand side and the antibody wells are on the right hand side. So after punching, uh, sorry, after loading the antigen and the antibody in the respective wells, dedicate always one pair of well at the bottom for only one pair of well for the control, that is known antigen and the antibody to be loaded. because. In the unknown samples, if the antigen is not present, there will be no precipitin band formed. But in the control well, because you have loaded known antigen and the antibody, there has to be a precipitin band appearing between the wells. That indicates that the electrophoresis has run properly. Otherwise, if you have not loaded the control well, that is control sample, if the samples are negative for the antigen, the entire slide will not have any precipitin band. And that may lead to confusion whether the electrophoresis took place or not. To avoid that confusion, it is always better to load a control sample that is known antigen and the known antibody in the last pair of well as dedicated as control well. So once that is done, the slide is ready to be loaded or kept on the electrophoresis platform. Please note the antibody side should be connected to the positive pole and the antigen side should be connected to the negative pole. So the slide is kept on the the platform of the electrophoresis operators like this. The positive pole that is red side of the pole is positive pole for the electrophoresis and the black is negative pole. Note the gauze that is bandage gauze is dipped in the buffer and kept at the edge of the slide as shown in the video kept at the wedge. Do not overlap the gauze onto the well because the sample may get absorbed by the gauze. See that it is kept at the edge. Now after the slides, after the slide is connected, you can load three or four slides and keep on the platform and at same time you can carry out electrophoresis of three or four slides. So once the gauze piece is kept on the slide, the slide is connected to the pole and the buffer conducts the electricity through the gauze piece. Okay, And now start the power supply in such a way that per 
microscope slide, you will need about 10 milliamps current at 50 volts. Per microscope slide, you will need 10 milliamps current and run the electrophoresis for about an hour. And you can observe from the transparent gel as the presbyterian band appears, as the antigens and the antibodies move towards one another in the counter current due to electric field, they will meet at a particular point between the two wells and a presbyterian band will appear which will be white in color. At the bottom of the electrophoresis apparatus, if you have kept a black paper, the white presbyterian band can be easily seen through the electrophoresis apparatus which is also transparent. So as I had mentioned to you, the control well that is positive control well should develop the presbyterian band. Why? Because there you have loaded known soluble antigen and soluble antibody. Whereas in the test samples, there may not be presbyterian bands if all the samples are negative for the antigen. But if some samples are positive, you will get the presbyterian band, you will observe the presbyterian band between the paired wells. Now here on the left hand side, the slide is shown which is stained with amido black which stains the protein. After the electrophoresis is completed, the slide was kept in amido black for about half an hour. Then the excess stain is washed off with saline. You will see the presbyterian bands are stained with amido black. And it is very clear from the presbyterian bands here that left hand side is dedicated for the antigen, right hand side is dedicated for the antibody. Here the antibody is stronger than the antigen, therefore almost all presbyterian bands are pushed towards the antigen well. And you can see that the presbyterian bands have appeared and some are very thick indicating the concentration is very high. Some are very very thin indicating the concentration is very low. And some are appearing very diffuse indicating the concentration is too low. So from the, on the basis of appearance of the presbyterian band, one can conclude not only the concentration, one can conclude that how the strength of the antigen and the antibody is and here it is very clear the antibody is stronger than the antigen. So using counter current immunoelectrophoresis, one can get the results of the antigen antibody reaction very fast. That is within one hour one can give the results of a particular suspected antigen. Whereas when we had done earlier experiments, that is octoloni technique or single radial immunodiffusion. In both these techniques, you have to wait for overnight to get the result to show whether the antigen antibody reaction has taken place. Whereas in the case of electrophoresis, if the amenities are available, if the electrophoresis apparatus is available, one can demonstrate the reaction between soluble antigen and antibody very quickly by presbyterian reaction and the results will be available within one hour. Thank you very much.